We continue today with chapter 20, The Gift of Lilies. Look upon all the trinkets made to hang upon the body, or to cover it, or for its use. See all the useless things made for its eyes to see. Think on the many offerings made for its pleasure, and remember all these were made to make seem lovely what you hate. Would you employ this hated thing to draw your brother to you, and to attract his body's eyes? Learn you but offer him a crown of thorns, not recognizing it for what it is, and trying to justify your own interpretation of its value by his acceptance. Yet still the gift proclaims his worthlessness to you, as his acceptance and delight acknowledges the lack of value who places on himself. Gifts are not made through bodies if they be truly given and received. For bodies can neither offer nor accept, hold out nor take. Only the mind can value, and only the mind decides on what it would receive and give. And every gift it offers depends on what it wants. It will adorn its chosen home most carefully, making it ready to receive the gifts it wants by offering them to those who come unto its chosen home, or those it would attract to it. And there they will exchange their gifts, offering and receiving what their minds judge to be worthy of them. Each gift is an evaluation of the receiver and the giver. No one but sees his chosen home as an altar to himself. No one but seeks to draw to it the worshippers of what he placed upon it, making it worthy of their devotion. And each has set a light upon his altar, that they may see what he has placed upon it and take it for their own. Here is the value that you lay upon your brother and on yourself. Here is your gift to both, your judgment on the Son of God for what he is. Forget not that it is your Savior to whom the gift is offered. Offer him thorns and you are crucified. Offer him lilies and it is yourself you free. I have great need for lilies, for the Son of God has not forgiven me. And can I offer him forgiveness when he offers thorns to me? For he who offers thorns to anyone is against me still, and who is still whole without him. Be you his friend for me, that I may be forgiven, and you may look upon the Son of God as whole. But look you first upon the altar in your chosen home, and see what you have laid upon it to offer me. If it be thorns whose points gleam sharply in a blood-red light, the body is your chosen home, and it is separation that you offer me. And yet the thorns are gone. Look you still closer at them now, and you will see your altar is no longer what it was. You look still with the body's eyes, and they can see but thorns. Yet you have asked for and received another sight. Those who accept the Holy Spirit's purpose as their own share also his vision. And what enables him to see his purpose shine forth from every altar now is yours as well as his. He sees no strangers, only dearly loved and loving friends. He sees no thorns but only lilies, gleaming in the gentle glow of peace that shines on everything he looks upon and loves. This Easter, look with different eyes upon your brother. You have forgiven me. And yet I cannot use your gift of lilies while you see them not, nor can you use what I have given unless you share it. The Holy Spirit's vision is no idle gift, no plaything to be tossed about a while and laid aside. Listen and hear this carefully, nor think it is but a dream, a careless thought to play with, or a toy you would pick up from time to time and then put by. For if you do you will be, and so will it be, to you. You have the vision now to look past all illusions. It has given you 
to see no thorns, no strangers, no obstacles to peace. The fear of God is nothing to you now. Who is afraid to look upon illusions knowing his Savior stands beside him? With him, your vision has become the greatest power for the undoing of illusion that God himself could give. For what God gave the Holy Spirit, you have received. The Son of God looks unto you for his release. For you have asked for and been given the strength to look upon this final obstacle and see no thorns nor nails to crucify the Son of God and crown him King of Death. Your chosen home is on the other side, beyond the veil. It has been carefully prepared for you and it is ready to receive you now. You will not see it with the body's eyes, yet all you need you have. Your home has called to you since time began, nor have you ever failed entirely to hear. You heard, but knew not how to look nor where, and now you know. In you the knowledge lies, ready to be unveiled and freed from all the terror that kept it hidden. There is no fear in love. The song of Easter is the glad refrain, the Son of God was never crucified. Let us lift up our eyes together, not in fear, but faith. And there will be no fear in us, for in our vision will be no illusions, only a pathway to the open door of heaven, the home we share in quietness and where we live in gentleness and in peace, as one together. Would you not have your holy brother lead you there? His innocence will light your way, offering you its guiding light and sure protection, and shining from the holy altar within him where you laid the lilies of forgiveness. Let him be to you the savior from illusions, and look on him with a new vision that looks upon the lilies and brings you joy. We go beyond the veil of fear, lighting each other's way, the holiness that leads us within us, as is our home. So will we find what we were meant to find by Him who leads us. This is the way to heaven and to peace, the peace of Easter, in which we join in glad awareness that the Son of God is risen from the past and has awakened to the present. Now is he free, unlimited in his communion with all that is within him. Now are the lilies of his innocence untouched by guilt and perfectly protected from the cold chill of fear and withering blight of sin alike. Your gift has saved him from the thorns and nails and his strong arm is free to guide you safely through them and beyond. Walk with him now, rejoicing for the Savior from illusions has come to greet you and lead you home with Him. Here is your Savior and your friend, released from crucifixion through your vision and free to lead you now where He would be. He will not leave you nor forsake the Savior in His pain. And gladly will you walk the way of innocence together, singing as you behold the open door of heaven and recognize the home that called to you. Give joyously to one another the freedom and the strength to lead you there, and come before each other's holy altar where the strength and freedom wait to offer and receive the bright awareness that leads you home. The lamp is lit in both of you for one another, and by the hands that gave it to your brother shall both of you be led past fear to love. And from the workbook, Lesson 159, I give the miracles I have received. No one can give what he has not received. To give a thing requires first you have it in your own possession. Here the laws of heaven and the world agree but here they also separate. The world believes that to possess a thing, it must be kept. Salvation teaches otherwise. 
to give is how to recognize you have received. It is the proof that what you have is yours. You understand that you are healed when you give healing. You accept forgiveness as accomplished in yourself when you forgive. You recognize your brother as yourself and thus do you perceive that you are whole. There is no miracle you cannot give, for all are given you. Receive them now by opening the storehouse of your mind where they are laid and give them away. Christ's vision is a miracle. It comes from far beyond itself for it reflects eternal love and the rebirth of love which never dies but has been kept obscure. Christ's vision pictures heaven for it sees a world so like to heaven that what God created perfect can be mirrored there. The darkened glass the world presents can show but twisted images in broken parts. The real world pictures heaven's innocence. Christ's vision is the miracle in which all miracles are born. It is their source remaining with each miracle you give and yet remaining yours. It is the bond by which the giver and receiver are united in extension here on earth as they are one in heaven. Christ beholds no sin in anyone and in his sight the sinless are as one. Their holiness was given by his Father and himself. Christ's vision is the bridge between the worlds, and in its power can you safely trust to carry you from this world into one made holy by forgiveness. Things which seem quite solid here are merely shadows there, transparent, faintly seen, at times forgot and never able to obscure the light that shines beyond them. Holiness has been restored to vision and the blind can see. This is the Holy Spirit's single gift, the treasure house to which you can appeal with perfect certainty for all the things that can contribute to your happiness. All are laid here already. All can be received but for the asking. Here the door is never locked and no one is denied his least request or his most urgent need. There is no sickness not already healed, no lack unsatisfied, no need unmet within this golden treasury of Christ. Here does the world remember what was lost when it was made, for here it is repaired, made new again, but in a different light. What was to be the home of sin becomes the center of redemption and the hearth of mercy, where the suffering are healed and welcome. No one will be turned away from this new home where his salvation waits. No one is stranger to him. No one asks for anything of him except the gift of his acceptance and his welcoming. Christ's vision is the holy ground in which the lilies of forgiveness set their roots. This is their home. They can be brought from here back to the world, but they can never grow in its unnourishing and shallow soil. They need the light and warmth and kindly care of Christ's charity provides. They need the love with which he looks on them, and they become his messengers who give as they receive. Take from his storehouse, that its treasures may increase. His lilies do not leave their home when they are carried back to the world. Their roots remain. They do not leave their source, but carry its beneficence with them, and turn the world into a garden like the one they came from, and to which they go again with added fragrance. Now are they twice blessed. The messages they brought from Christ have been delivered and returned to them, and they return them gladly unto Him. Behold the store of miracles set out for you to give. Are you not worth the gift when God appointed it be given you? 
judge not God's Son, but follow in the way he has established. Christ has dreamed the dream of a forgiven world. It is his gift, whereby a sweet transition can be made from death to life, from hopelessness to hope. Let us an instant dream with him. His dream awakens us to truth. His vision gives us the means for a return to our unlost and everlasting sanctity in God. Amen.